What's going on everybody? Teddy Baldassar here from teddybaldassar.com. Today we're looking at a few watches available for purchase on my store from an awesome biker brand in Brooklyn, New York with Carpenter. At any moment throughout this video, if you wanna learn a little bit more information about these pieces, I will have a link in the description. And if you are interested, you can purchase them as well. Today we're gonna to be looking at a few different watches, a few different case styles with their Gent collection. So let's take a closer look at these pieces. First, taking a look at the basic rundown of the specs, we have a case size of 38 millimeters, thickness of 13 millimeters, lug width of 19 millimeters, lug to lug of 43.8 millimeters, water resistance of 50 meters, movement is an automatic 28-24-2 from ETA, Crystal here, we have acrylic. This one features a screw down crown. Price, we're looking at $795 on the bracelet and $725 on a strap. And also guys, at checkout, if you put in the promo code CARPENTER, you can get any strap with your purchase of this watch up to $50 for free. Now first, a little bit of backstory on Carpenter watches. So Carpenter is a micro brand based in Brooklyn, New York and offer cleanly designed pieces with a mix of modern and vintage flair. Carpenter was just first put on my radar just a couple years back. Personally, I just liked their clean, simple looks that walk the lines of being both casual and formal depending on the strap and model you go for. Today, I have a few different options among their Gent collection that we're gonna be taking a closer look at, and they're really attractive and unassuming everyday style pieces when you put them on the wrist. When strapping these watches on, the Gent has a relatively small case that's going to fit on small to average size wrists optimally. So larger wristed folks might not be as in favor of this size here, but that also is going to depend more on your personal preference. With this 38 millimeter case and condensed lug to lug, you're going to have a piece that will wear pretty true to its actual case size, and if anything, a little bit smaller given that 43.8 millimeter lug to lug. And as a reminder, when looking at each of these pieces, they are models that are not working inventory, but well-worn pieces, so just wanna be clear there. The watch is coming in Different cases are offered in a variety of materials and strap options with the stainless steel G1 and G2 both being offered on a metal three link bracelet in a variety of leather straps and the bronze options being offered exclusively on leather straps with a bronze buckle to match the case. The bracelet comes with a three link style and has a high polished center link meeting at a two button release on the underside and reminds me of another watch's bracelet in this price range, the Tissot Gentleman, but I think you're getting a better bracelet here in terms of the breathability and not pulling hair as much. The lug width here is 19 millimeters and I do have plenty of 19 millimeter straps on my site. And given the versatile looks here, I think it's certainly something you wanna consider just investing in a variety of straps to maximize the piece. Transitioning to the bronze pieces, one thing that I enjoy about bronze in this instance is that it is kind of rare to find a design for a piece of this type coming in bronze as many bronze watches that I commonly see are typically thick divers. So I find this to be an appealing offer. One important note here is that bronze, of course, is a much different material than stainless steel. So it will age differently as a result and patina when interacting with oils of your skin and dealing with the conditions of consistent wear. So just know that it is going to age differently. However, there are ways of slowing down this aging process in case you did want to maintain the original look by using different concoctions of baking soda and lemon water, for example. But I know many people like to have just the case age naturally, as I think it is much of the appeal when it comes to bronze watches overall. Transitioning to the front of the watch, we have a similar layout among all of the pieces with them first featuring an acrylic crystal. Now this is clearly something that was chosen more for aesthetics more than it was in terms of just durability or trying to cut corners. And I think they really were going for this vintage styling here, but I know there's a lot of detractors to acrylic crystals, but I've kind of become more of an advocate in seeing this side a little bit more. My Junghans Maxville Chronoscope have had no issues over it for four years and say a case like the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch with its Hezolite crystal, for example, I think looks more superior than the Sapphire. So there are those vintage undertones that I think that are trying to be evoked and trying to pull at those uh, heartstrings of mechanical watch lovers out there. But I think you just have to take that into consideration as well here. On the dials of these pieces, we have a similar layout across all the models as mentioned. All of them have a simple layout with applied stick markers along the outside with minute hash marks between and have the every five minute numeral nestled at the farthest point of the dial at each applied marker. At the 12 o'clock, we have the printing of the brand's logo. At the six, the simple writing of automatic. At the three, the watch offers a simple date function with the aperture appearing in a circular outline format that tightly encloses the appearing numeral within. At the center, a simple pencil style handset containing Superluminova and a triangular tip second hand. Flipping the gent over, we have view of the Swiss automatic caliber, the ETA 2824-2. 
So this movement is probably the most ubiquitous mechanical movement out there on the market, but that is not necessarily a bad thing at all. And since learning a lot more about watches in the past few years and starting this channel, I've really come to appreciate the many attributes that make the ETA 2824-2 just such a solid movement, especially when it comes to regulating these as you can really just do it yourself with quite ease and just the ability to have them service at a very manageable rate and to be done easily by a watchmaker. This one housed within this carpenter features a nicely signed and finished rotor with a Cote de Genève finish. The movement operates at 28,800 vibrations per hour, 4 hertz, features hacking and hand winding when unscrewing the screw down crown, so hacking stopping the seconds when pulling out the crown to set precise time, and this one has a power reserve of 38 hours. And just for some out of the box spec in terms of these ETA movements, looking at plus or minus 12 seconds a day up to plus or minus 30 seconds a day, but these are all being regulated in Brooklyn. So just to unpack here, guys, I think really what attracted me to Carpenter a few years ago is just the clean looks. I like the vintage styling without going too much in that direction while kind of keeping that modern type of aesthetic that I think is also very much appreciated in today's marketplace. And having a really solid Swiss caliber within, I think these are just really nice looking pieces. It's as simple as that for great everyday wear. So guys, if you did like these watches, have a link in the description, go check out, learn a little bit more. Also, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. I'm gonna be releasing more content on this channel. So would love to have you following me along here. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.